equation, solution building, and just flexibility of adding Sonos into these really unique and amazing spaces. But you're going to be driving this with products like Amp, Port, and the Sonos Architectural line. So you just have a lot of really uh, unique ways to build out these products. And that's what we're going to be covering really in depth today is all the details. And we just want you to leave with all the tools that you could possibly need to build out a really strong solution in any one of those homes. My name is Ryan Handerhan. I am a senior global trainer here at Sonos. You can see the team here at any given time. You may have interacted with one of us or many of us, whether through things like Cedia, ISE, um, online webinars through 21st century. We're uh, everywhere around the globe all the time. And we're here to uh, really support and drive, help drive your business. That's what our goal is. We're paid on the success of you guys. So we really want to see you guys um, grow and continue to build really cool systems. So again, you're going to build out these um, very unique solutions in the home. And why should Sonos be a part of this? You know, how is it controlled, the in installation configuration of different products, and finally, the Sonos architectural line uh, by Sonats, including the new 8-inch speaker, which we'll be talking about towards the end. Now, when we talk about Sonos, this all comes back to the beginning in 2002 when we had this simple vision of playing music in anywhere in the home. If you rewind and you think about what 2002 was like, that was the year the the year after the iPod was invented and Wi-Fi was really not much of a thing yet. There was very basic Wi-Fi networks, but the home network was really rudimentary and the founders of Sonos had this goal of being able to get music accessible throughout the home without the need of having to wire every individual speaker. And you can see here, since the iPod had come out the year before, the smartphone was a far, you know, glimmer in somebody's mind. And you had to have a individual Wi-Fi remote, a home network, and then a uh, source computer that would be able to play that audio and convert that audio to different rooms to play music in different um, different songs in different rooms throughout the home. Since then, we've evolved and we now have a suite of products that really blend and work together throughout the home. So whether you're playing music in the living room, the kitchen, the bedroom, you have music everywhere for that home and even products that go outside of the home with products like Move and Roam. Um, what you can see here is we have those home theater devices, all in one speakers, home theater, and the products we'll be focusing on today, amp and port. If you've never installed a Sonos speaker before, it's one of the easiest products you can possibly set up in the modern electronic space. It is a simple set the box down, plug it into power, open up the Sonos app, add it to the network, and you have a new room. From there, adding additional spaces are even easier because it's already been, the Wi-Fi password's already been shared. You can wire these to the network if you want. You can run them off Wi-Fi. You have a lot of flexibility. And for your clients that you're building out these systems, it allows you to play music in every room of your home very simply and very easily. So your customers can play music in the kitchen while watching a movie in the living room with wireless surround sound. Even upstairs playing something completely different Every room in the home is playing something unique, and each one of those rooms um, can have its own individual volume control, so it's never too loud or too quiet. This all runs off those modern Wi-Fi networks today, so they're much more robust than when Sonos started uh, 22 years ago, and that strong network is going to allow it to play music everywhere. And to your customers, it's just going to work. It's going to work like magic to them. And they're just going to be able to enjoy and use this product. So Sonos will become one of the most used products that are in their home. Every day they'll be turning on music, using the soundbar for their television. It really just complements the life and becomes a seamless part uh, of that. When it comes to music, we have over 150 native music services on board of Sonos. Whether you're talking about super popular services like Apple Music and Spotify, down to niche services like Fish Radio, um, different uh, commercial-based music services, wherever you're looking to play music, there's a lot of different ways of playing it. And so your clients that have 
Uh, those mainstream services will get support no problem. Those niche services are integrated as well. And that's without mentioning services like AirPlay 2 and Bluetooth, where you can still play those on your Sonos system. Sonos Radio is included on board. We always want music to be front and center. So when you set up a Sonos system, Sonos Radio is ready to launch. It's thousands of live radio stations from around the world. And you also have curated mood-based stations. So you'll always have something to play and you don't have to have an account. Or even if your client doesn't have a paid music service, there's one built into Sonos. And this is important because music makes life better. You think about how often music becomes a part of your life, whether you're driving to work in the morning, whether you're working from home, music is almost guaranteed to be a part of it. And it's not just Sonos trying to push speakers, it's backed up by data. We worked with uh, some uh, studies a few years ago to understand the importance of music around a, a, uh, a person's life. And think about going to a party and having music playing versus if there was no music playing at that party, which one would you rather be going to? Or if you think about you meeting somebody new for the first time and they're talking about their favorite artist who they're most passionate about seeing, if it's a good artist, somebody that you like, you're going to like them that much more than if they, it's an art, artist that's terrible in your mind and they have terrible taste. Think about how polarizing artists like Taylor Swift are these days. Or going to a restaurant, and if that music that's playing is really loud, really vibrant, it's more of a club style music, and you and your uh, your partner, your wife, your husband wanted to have a quiet dinner, even if it's your favorite restaurant, you may not want to go in because the music is in the way of enjoying it. Music's extremely important in our lives, and so we know that importance, and we know how much it complements in the home, and so we want to play music throughout. And when you are playing music throughout the home, you have to have an easy access to control. Your customers could have the most robust system of really high-end amplifiers, uh, really amazing sounding speakers throughout the home. But if it's not easy to control, customers aren't going to use it. So whether you're using the app to control, AirPlay 2, things like direct control from certain services, the touch base controls on top, even voice and partner, all are supported through Sonos. They all work together. So that way it's going to just do exactly what they want to do in that moment. Part, partner control is obviously super important to us because um, whether you're selling it or you're looking around at 21st century knowing that these could integrate into Sonos and now you could sell a more cohesive system that all integrates together nicely in the home. Products like Sony ES line of receivers or uh, control systems all integrate nicely into Sonos so that you can use those control systems to control Sonos. You can create really amazing scene control with companies like Lutron, use um, different receiver brands so that when you connect a port to that receiver, you have automated control of just hitting play in the Sonos app and your receiver turns on and sets to a source automatically. No matter what your service you're using, you have this freedom of control. Like the different versions of control I said earlier, all of these are going to be working together. So if you're using a Sonos app to start a control and then you put your phone down back on the charger and you walk up to the speaker to hit next song, the second you hit next song, the app is going to update on your phone as well. You could also start a, a song over AirPlay 2 and then ask the Sonos voice assistant um, something like, you know, what song is playing and the voice assistant will get that metadata from AirPlay 2 to understand. So it's all just going to work without you having to think about it. There's a lot of behind the scenes work that is required to get this going. And we want to make sure that it just does it without having to think about it and so that your customers are going to enjoy it. Now, diving into the products that we actually sell, Sonos falls into four major categories when we, we talk about speakers and uh, Sonos products. We have our architectural line, our speakers or smart speakers, depending on um, how you want to classify them, our home theater devices, and our portable speakers. Today, we're going to be focused on just the architectural solution, um, consisting of products like Amp, Port, and the Sonos Architectural line by Sonance. 
these three uh, kind of categories of products, especially when you talk about the Sonos Architectural, cover a wide range of products and they create the major uh, revenue seen in this channel of business. You guys sell and build really nice custom solutions using mostly these products. And so today we're going to give you all of those tools and really cover every detail so that you know exactly how far to build really neat systems. But on top of that, get new ideas on how to expand those solutions into homes. So in ways that you would have not thought of before and in ways that uh, your clients will really love. We're going to start off with port. Port is a, a component that you would plug into an amplifier or receiver, allowing you to take anything that's playing on Sonos and connect it to that receiver. So port comes in really nicely when you're connecting the entire home together. You're building out a really great system. You're putting in ceiling speakers throughout the home. You're using them all controlled by this AVR. And with the port on board, you now have a wireless control function for that so that AVR can sit in a closet and if configured properly, have it so that the amp will turn on automatically and people in the home can control, turn on, change songs, and even turn up the volume of these uh, devices all wirelessly, all without the need of a dedicated wall controller or certain RF receivers, you know, more of those traditional sense of music because Sonos will just be the control for that. These primary use cases are great because you can turn that third party amplifier into a zone of Sonos. So maybe even you connected a bunch of Aero 100s and 300s throughout the home. You're playing something in the kitchen and you want to play it on that receiver group them together and all of a sudden your multi thousand dollar receiver is connected to a four hundred dollar five hundred dollar sonos uh, era 300. you also have the line in on the back to connect other zones uh, with sonos so you could connect something like a turntable and play that audio not only on the device it's plugged into like this port or you could also play it wirelessly throughout the home you're going to see these applications come into play really when you have that traditional AVR and you want to make it Sonos connected, connecting Sonos port to a um, multi-zone, you know, matrix amplifier so you can have discrete audio streaming in each zone and then that line in again. Around the back, setup is super clean, super easy. You have Ethernet ports on the top so that if you're connecting it to uh, a rack-based system, you can uh, either connect it individually to a network switch or even daisy chain in certain configurations. You have your inputs or inputs of an analog uh, RCA to connect that turntable or CD player, and then the outputs that would go to that receiver. So an analog RCA, which uses a onboard DAC that's of you know great quality, or you can use a digital coax output, which is even a higher resolution connected to the receiver of the receiver that the port's connected to, and then use the DAC that's on board that receiver. Lastly, you can see a 12 volt trigger there. That's to help create some fast automations. So you wanna create something where, say you hit play on the Sonos app. It's not a works with Sonos receiver, but you have a 12 volt trigger. You can create some automations for it to play automatically. Around the front, you have a status indicator light that can be turned on or off in the Sonos app. So this way, if you're building a wall of these on a rack system, you can turn off the status indicator and it just makes it a really clean, uh, simple installation. Connecting to the receiver, you choose either that RCA or digital coax output. RCA uses, uses that DAC that's on board, like I said earlier, or you could use the DAC that's built into the receiver if you choose the digital coax uh, output itself. You have multiple ways of connecting this, and each one is going to be able to uh, fulfill the needs of your customer. It just comes down to what your preference is, whether that uh, especially multi-zone receivers oftentimes don't have a digital input. They only have an RCA input creates those opportunities to build out different systems. So in a really clean and simple way, you also have the stereo input so you can connect 
uh, outside physical media sources, like we've said earlier. You can even set up an autoplay feature so that when it detects something being plugged into the back of it, it automatically switches to a line in um, source so that, say, this is sitting on a table next to that receiver. Somebody comes over, wants to play music. They plug in, it automatically switches over, and it starts playing. This is not native by default. You have to turn it on within the Sonos app. That way, you know, 12-year-old kid doesn't come over and start plugging in cables trying to take over the system of what's playing. That 12-volt trigger allows you to connect that 3.5 in or that 3.5 millimeter uh, cable to an amplifier, set up a uh, automation so that when you hit play, music starts playing. Obviously, this is a 12-volt trigger, so it's more of a unified source. This is not going to be doing lots of smart control. So dependent on the receiver that you're using, you want to understand the right automations, the right uh, setup and programming of it. But it is a 12-volt trigger input. It is a universal standard, so you can use it on many, many receivers. The Ethernet ports on the back allow you to hardwire it to a local area network. They're megabit speed, and once they're connected, you can even disable the Wi-Fi in the Sonos app. This becomes really helpful if you're using a uh, big rack system. You have 10 zones of Sonos on board. You don't need 10 zones of Wi-Fi broadcasting for SonosNet. You can disable the Wi-Fi on board and have no extra Wi-Fi being broadcast, save some interference, save some uh, energy use and just really open up the network a little bit more. Lastly, around here, you can see the uh, barrel style power cable. This is an auto switching 100 to 240 volt, uh, 50, 60 hertz universal input. So if you were to just swap out the cable, you'll be able to use this anywhere in the world. Um, we only make, you know, basically one product for the entire world with these um, auto switching power supplies that are available for them. But most importantly to this channel, it fits in a rack system. Port was made to be one U high, so it's gonna be able to fit into a rack shelf. You can fit three across on a single U, and even if you get the right shelf, you can actually fit six onto a single shelf because it's not that deep of a product itself. This way, you can fit six zones onto a rack, have them all configured, there's no they're not outputting a ton of heat, so you don't have to worry about thermal management as much. And it's just going to be a really clean, awesome install. Moving on to AMP. AMP is by far the most popular product in this channel, and with good reason, given all the different flexible options that AMP has when it comes to adding it to your system. AMP is a two-channel, 125 watts per channel amplifier that's able to power everything from satellite speakers to in ceilings in walls or even bookshelf and floor standing speakers that 125 watts per channel uh, goes down to two ohms dynamically gets up to 250 watts peak so it has plenty of power to fill up any of those spaces amps primary use cases are going to be powering passive speakers whether you're using your favorite um, in ceilings, outdoor speakers, your floor standing speakers, or even the Sonos by uh, Sonos Architectural by Sonance, AMP is going to be able to power those speakers and really just play whatever you need. You also have an HDMI ARC input on the back, so you could connect it to your TV and use this as your home theater playback. You also have uh, the ability of using this as a rear channel in a home theater system. Think like ARC up front, AMP is rears and even using multiple of these for a multi-zone audio system. You're gonna see this most often when wiring a pair of speakers to a single zone, and then that way that room has music now playing. You can also do a rack full of these systems so you can have music playing in every room, different streams for different uh, zones, and every single room will have that own individualized volume control. So again, no room's ever too loud or too quiet. Because uh, the amp is so thin, you can also mount it behind a TV, and that way you can have a really clean and simple install that doesn't require tons of demolition to hide wires, cables, products, lots of different materials just to get a simple home theater zone going. Amps could be flexible for all those spaces. And again, 125 watts per channel at 8 ohms. We have two custom banana plug uh, 
output connections, the ability of doing a stereo or dual mono style output on those speakers, and an auto detecting RCA style subwoofer output. This way you have connections for all of your different functions here. We'll dive in in a second, but you can see the, uh, the simple wire plugs, uh, banana plug wires on the back on the right side here, subwoofer output, a RCA input, and even that HDMI connection. So when you look at this, you're able to set this up with tons of different ways. Many people use the HDMI arc input to connect to their TV. Many people don't. So you have lots of different functions of being able to connect it and use it in those flexible ways. Around the front, you have that status indicator light so that you can connect it, turn on or off within the Sonos app, just like the port. If you're doing a rack of these, you can have all the status lights turned off and have a really clean monolith style connection to the front. You also have onboard touch controls to turn up and down the volume, play pause. You can even do things like uh, hold the play pause button and depending on what's what the player is doing, it'll either group or ungroup to other speakers in the home. You can also disable touch controls on these. So if you're putting them in a rack system and you don't need anybody to ever touch them, you can disable them in case somebody goes over and brushes it by accident. You also have an IR receiver that wraps around the bottom. So the way that AMP is engineered, you can actually mount the mount a IR blaster under the amp so that an IR receiver can still be seen and it's a much cleaner look for that amp. Whether it's on the front or around the bottom, the IR receiver connects and you can use any IR remote to control and connect the amp. Around that back there, we have these binding posts. They're the uh, thumb screw style that accepts anywhere from 10 to 18 gauge wire. If you pop them out, they're just standard banana plug ports. So you can use either the ones that are included in the box or your favorite uh, style connection. And those are configurable for either stereo or mono connection. When you're wiring speakers to these, Power rating should be about, you know, 125 watts per channel for 8 ohms or 200 watts for 4 ohm speakers. If you're connecting anything more uh, under 4 ohms, we advise against it. Uh, amp's not going to function as well with it. But if you are doing um, two pair, you know, two pairs of speakers at 8 ohms, that will be fine. Be able to wire it in parallel. Um, we don't recommend uh, series just due to the quality of speaker that it goes from there. And if you're using more than two pairs of speakers connected to a Sonos amp, you can pair up uh, to three pairs using the Sonos architectural line of speakers. So you just have a lot of options when connecting it. Also around back though, is that subwoofer output. So not only can you connect a Sonos amp to the Sonos sub and have a wireless subwoofer connection between the amp and the sub, you could also, or add a, a non Sonos sub to the system. Add a third party sub within the Sonos app. You adjust the crossover frequency from 50 to 110 hertz so that the sound lines up right. And this way you could have a physical connected sub that is uh, a matching set to the pair of speakers that it's being used. You could also add a Sonos sub at the same time. It's just creating opportunities for different solutions and different installs with those uh, style speakers. And then just like the port, you do have a RCA input. So you can connect a turntable, CD player, any source of physical media that's also able to be configured like the um, autoplay just on the port. Lastly is the HDMI uh, input here. This way you can connect to your TV. It is an HDMI ARC style connection. So able to play uh, high res audio content, it's going to be able to control over CEC control. So you're able to do things like if you have a IR remote with line of sight uh, for that remote to the TV, it can send the TV can send the signal from the HDMI to the amp and control it that way without the need of an IR blaster or um, other components. Because it is a HDMI input getting high res content able to get Dolby digital content as well, you can add with an amp up front, you can add either Sonos rears or another amp as rears for a 4.1 you know, or a 4.0 uh, solution. 
that center channel signal that would be you know lost if it was a uh, non sono speaker is actually matrixed in to the left and right outputs because we know what's the left and right channel we know we're getting a center signal we're going to mix it into the left and right to create a phantom center and if you haven't listened to it i highly recommend it because most if not all of your customers will not be able to discern the difference between a the phantom center and a um, dedicated center when given the chance to choose between having a speaker there versus not having a speaker there. So if there's a cost savings to the client for that. With that, you can also add rears to your solution. And again, just like the port, you have a dual uh, Ethernet style setup to hardwire it to a rack solution, daisy chain if you need to, their megabit connection, it could be disabling the Wi-Fi within the Sonos app when you are um, once you're connected over ethernet and again also like the port you have 100 to 240 volt connection 50 60 hertz internal integrated power supply so this way you swap out the cable works anywhere in the world lastly you do have a mounted uh, point on the bottom so to configure this and attach it either to a wall mount it to a rack secure it to a system it's an m5 threaded uh it's M5 threaded size, so it's a very standard mount that'll fit anywhere, and it allows it to create a really seamless and clean look for a rack installation. Because AMP is one and a half U tall, you could uh, install this in many different ways, whether it be side by side and take up two U of rack space, or you could actually stack um, two amps on top of each other uh, and side by side, and you would be able to fit four amps into a three U of rack space. So depending on how you want to be able to use this. And because the advanced thermal management on board of the Sonos amp, you actually can stack up to three on top of each other. And the way thermals work on the amp is that there's a chimney style to pull the air from under in the middle and push it out through the top so that you can stack these three and without you know really formal heat management you don't have to worry about too many um without it being you know too hot in the cabinet or uh, closet it's going to be able to play that audio and it's going to have a great time it's also wall mountable using that threaded wall mount here you could see you could drop this into a place like this lock it into place and even have wire uh, management cable codes for different accessories that allow you to mount this in more unique solutions I've seen this one specifically used on uh, a desk solution that was really neat. They had it on a desk mounted against a wall. They mounted a bunch of amps against the back of the desk uh, so that it was flat with the top of the desk so that you could even have touch controls on top, but really clean uh, install and look for those uh, zones of audio. For that line in, you can play uh line and audio connected to the auxiliary port on the back of the amp the port or even a five air 100 and 300 because they have the ability of line in as well using line in allows you to play that you know turntable audio a cd player or even just a third you know an outside media source onto your sono system and then group it with the rest of your home you can adjust this very simply by going into system select your speaker you'll see a uh, line and source here and you can even set the source level so that it matches the native you know speaker and this changes because if you have something like a old ipod that you're playing audio from you have volume on board of that versus if you're playing a turntable a turntable does not have a uh if it, a pre-amplified turntable could have an audio output already or it may not so setting up that source level to match the speaker is really important you can also name it within the Sonos app. We have a bunch of pre-populated ones, but you can also type in your own. You can set up audio delays to help with syncing, or if there's a lot of interference in the home to make sure that the buffer is uh, proper here. You can see low is anywhere from 75 milliseconds, which is as low as it gets, which is super fast, but you can set it at a max of 2000 milliseconds, which is almost two seconds to give it a really high buffer rate. And if there is that, again, interference, allow it to connect from there 
Lastly is that audio play we talked about that auto play we talked about earlier with options of being able to include grouped rooms or even set that auto play volume. So every time you plug in something, it's automatically switching to it. When you are using a line in, um, you have the option of using compressed or uncompressed audio. It's natively set to automatic. So 99% of the time I would leave it at that. But if you have a really robust and strong network, you could set it to uncompressed audio, forcing it to do uh, no compression and sending that over the uh, whole network. This was where you play into that um, line and delay so that you can hook up different channels and maybe play it on max audio or max uh, audio delay. But because it's something like a turntable audio where there's no video component, having a delay really doesn't impact the experience at all. And that audio play earlier. One of the neat tricks that uh, Sonos offers that uh, is not publicly talked about because this is more of a specialty piece is Sonos supports 24 bit audio playback through services like Cubuzz and Amazon HD. There's a few 24 bit audio sources. You're not able to play 24 bit audio over your music library though. What you can do is use the optical adapter that's either sold separately or included in the box of Arc and Beam connect that to an HDMI source and plug it into the back of the Sonos amp. Sonos amp has the ability of uh, connecting from that optical source to an HDMI signal. We'll play it 24 bit audio natively without any compression um, out there. So that way you could play some really high res local content on your Sonos amp and play it all that way. If you do group it, it will downsample to 16 bit. But um, the idea here is getting your customers who have super high res audio files, that 24 bit audio file to be able to be played on a Sonos amp on the really nice speakers that you're setting it up for them. When it comes to setting up amp for home theater, um, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. We wanted to really give it its own section. Amp has that HDMI ARC input. So you're going to connect it to the TV, you gain CEC control, all of the functions that we've already talked about. If you're using the optical adapter that's not included in the box of AMP but is with Arc and Beam, you're able to use a optical connection to your TV. So if it's an older television or HDMI EARC or ARC is not available, you could still use the optical connection. Just know you're not going to gain CEC control because optical isn't, uh, doesn't support that. When you are using an HDMI ARC input with the Sonos AMP, you get codecs like um, TrueHD, Dolby Digital 5.1, and DTS content over an ARC connection, thanks to the higher bandwidth. But if you do switch to an optical, you still get Dolby 5.1. So you're still getting really great high-end audio inputs, but just know which sources are able to play which content so that when AMP is playing, you're getting the best audio signal. With that amp, you're connecting and you're getting that true HD, you know, Dolby 5.1 signal, but you're playing it only on two speakers in the front. You have that left and right playing on a TV. We're going to matrix that in across the left and right and create that phantom center so that it's going to sound really great and balance between the TV. It's going to sound like this, uh, the vocals are coming from directly from the TV, really helping envelop them in that experience, getting really great detailed dialogue without the need of a dedicated center channel. Depending on the client, I said this earlier, depending on the client, it um, may not make a difference to them whether they have a center channel or not. And if it comes down to functionality, flexibility of the install with the Sonos amp, this is a really great solution for them. Now, once you're playing this audio, you have options of speech enhancement and night sound. This is some of our um, sound engineers that have won Oscars. They're really qualified in their field, help fine tune the sound to make sure it sounds as good as possible. Within uh, speech enhancement mode, this is gonna drive more of those center channel frequencies so that you're able to hear the dialogue more clearly. This is great for that client who's maybe watching, you know, like Law and & Order and they're walking through New York, lots of street sounds, lots of background sounds, really hard to hear the vocals. So they keep turning up the volume just to pull out the details of the dialogue, uh, but you're also turning up the volume of everything. 
speech enhancements just boosting those dialogue channels. Conversely, night sound is for those who are watching TV late at night, maybe watching something like Jurassic Park, they're hiding, they can't, you know, they're talking in whispers, you can't hear what's going on, so you turn up the volume, and all of a sudden a jump scare, Tyrannosaurus screams, and because you turn up the volume, the la you know, the sound is extremely loud. Night sound will take some really advanced processing and turn down the volume of super loud sounds, but turn up the volume of those quieter sounds. So that way you're going to get a really even experience that's able to enjoy your favorite shows and movies even late at night. This way you can enjoy your favorite shows. And when you're using a amp with that solution, you can have, you know, connected to your TV, your left and right speakers and have a really great audio experience. But you can also add a second amp. And with a second amp, you could have one as your fronts, one as your rears and have a really great surround sound system using two amps and four speakers, adding either a third party sub or a Sono sub and really building out that flexible solution. Just to show all the different ways that you can configure a amp into a home theater solution, you could have it as just your fronts in a uh, home theater scenario connected to your TV, playing your favorite TV audio, but then you could start adding subwoofers. So if the amp is by itself, either using, you know, a sub mini, a full size Sono sub, a pair of dual sub scenarios, or even a third party sub, you can connect lots of different speakers to this, um, to the amp and have different speakers for different solutions. Each client's unique. So that way you can build it out that way. But then you start adding surrounds. So with that solution, you could add something like Aero 100s connected to your amp as your fronts and have a 4.0 or a 4.1 solution here. You could even do something like fives as rears or even another amp connected to there. So you're doing a 4.1 solution using two amps, four sets of, or four in ceiling or in wall speakers and a Sonos sub. You can even use a arc as your fronts with amp as your rears. Lots of different ways AMP fits into the home theater scenario, creating a lot of different options for you to build this out for your clients. If you're running uh, AMP over a long distance TV, you know, in the living room, but you have a rack in the basement, there are arc balins that allow you to connect this over long distances, whether through Toslink or um, ARC connection. So you can run it over extremely long distances through CAT6. And this just allows you to build out really uh, simple but beautiful solutions. What the last category we want to talk about is the Sonos Architectural. Once we came out with AMP, we uh, were getting a lot of talk from clients about wanting to have an end-to-end -end Sonos solution or at the very minimum, the availability of talking about a Sonos end-to-end -end solution. So instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, we worked with Sonance to build a set of in-ceiling, in-wall, and outdoor speakers that are going to blend beautifully well into the home, but then give it a little bit of that Sonos style and create functions that you can only find because Sonos knows the amp connected to a pair of these speakers can maximize its output and create the best sound experience possible. And that's where the Sonos architectural line came in. As you can see here, we have four sets of speakers, um, a six and a half inch in ceiling, a new eight inch in ceiling, which we'll be talking about in a second, in walls and uh, outdoor solutions. These speakers are designed and tuned by Sonos and then using the mastery of Sonance manufacturing built by them. We do all the work to test, tune, make sure they're reaching our levels of quality. They're going to uh, work in the physical and performance standard that Sonos demands. And then using Sonance best tooling and manufacturing, they're going to build the speakers uh, to their highest quality. And then when you pair these passive speakers up with the Sonos amp, you're going to really unlock the most powerful style of sound thanks to Sonos knowing what these speakers are and optimizing the output for those speakers. So when you think about connecting a pair of speakers, maybe a set of, you know, uh, third party speakers to a Sonos amp, 
Sonos Amp doesn't know which speaker uh, it's connected to. Amp is always going to work to protect itself to make sure it doesn't break and that the client can listen to music every single day. So this reliability is one of the reasons why so many people love the Sonos Amp. When you hook up those non-Sonos speakers, it's going to power them, but without any tuning, it doesn't know what's on the other end. So how does that frequency response compare to Sonos speakers versus another brand of speakers? Well, when you pair up a set of Sonos Architectural, it allows it to get more performance out of those speakers. When these speakers are built, we're adding additional circuitry to those speakers, which are not found on any other non-Sonos um, non speaker. And when you run speaker detection, AMP knows exactly which set of speakers and how many are connected to the other end, knows the precise limits of those speakers, and can push them all the way to their maximum without failing. This is what allows us to get a maximum performance and tuning out of our speakers. And this is the key differentiator of being a Sonos end-to-end -end solution when you pair it up with the Sonos AMP. How this looks is in a perfect world, a passive speaker frequency response would be um, something like this curve here, where you have a really flat EQ curve, tails off at the end due to the limitations of um, size of speakers. And this is when you would add a subwoofer. Real world, typical speaker response curve, you know, has some ebbs and flows depending on different areas of the speaker. Because AMP knows which speaker it's connected to, what happens is it's able to boost certain frequencies that know it's a limitation of the Sonos, uh, of that typical speaker and able to boost it a little bit further in certain areas, tone it down in others to create the closest EQ curve that would be um, ideal for uh, the listening environment. Getting a flatter EQ curve creates a more natural listening, able to discern better details out of that speaker. So when you pair up uh, Sonos Architectural with the uh, Sonos Amp, you're going to optimize that performance. You're going to get better reliability because it knows the maximum of those speakers. And because of that optimized performance, you're able to pair up to three pairs of speakers to a single Sonos Amp. You also unlock TruePlay tuning. So if you're not familiar with TruePlay, this is our room correction software that's able to listen to the acoustic environment of a space and adjust the EQ of a speaker to match that space more closely. Think about really active rooms where there's lots of concrete, hard walls, hard surfaces, that's very echoey versus a very soft room that maybe has couches, rugs, drapes, things that would absorb sound frequencies. TruePlay Tune can account for each of those spaces and create an ideal sound for each of those. Take that to the next level with the Sonos Amp, some passive in-ceiling speakers, so that way you have speakers that blend into the home, but also sound phenomenal. This also unlocks a custom DSP for each of those speakers, so even if you don't run TruePlay Tuning, uh, say on something like the outdoor speakers where you can't run TruePlay, that custom DSP is loaded up because the amp knows the optimized settings for those out of the labs and out of the um, out of manufacturing. And that's for in ceiling, six inch, eight inch, in walls, and outdoor speakers. Starting with the six inch in ceiling, these are really designed just to disappear into the home and whether using round or the optional square grills can be fitted to the ceiling to really create a seamless blend of that system. You're going to see a lot of similar specs here because we built these built these to be as universal as possible. So with the in ceilings, they're optimized for that Sonos amp, things like TruePlay, DSP, a super low profile white grill and available in a six and eight inch model. These Low profile grills are perfectly paintable. We recommend using a water-based latex paint, thin it down, strain it, remove any lumps, and then a touch-up tool can make sure that the coverage is uh, really clean and even. This way you have some, a speaker blending into the home even further and as close to invisible as possible. Our newest eight inch speaker, which launched officially yesterday, I believe, um, really unlocked what is a, is available to an eight inch speaker. Because you're going from a six and a half inch to an eight inch style speaker, 
even though it's only about an inch and a half in cone uh, size, that's unlocking a lot more power. So when you add an eight inch to the lineup, not only is it a larger speaker for those bigger rooms, but it creates more opportunities of installs. So if you're, you know, you say that six inch isn't uh, a big enough speaker for the space, you now have the eight inch uh, option. You also have better sound and acoustics thanks to the larger drivers and ability to create more frequencies while still maintaining a strong depth of a, you know, cutout of a 10 and an eighth, um, 10 and an eighth inches, mounting depth of just five, uh, just over five and a third inches and a grill diameter of just 11 inches. With this new eight inch driver, it's a polypropylene, uh, polypropylene cone, a rubber surround, and a large voice coil that allows this to drive a bass response down to 29 hertz. Think about your average subwoofer, how low it can get. Even the Sono Sub at um, its best output, you're getting about 25 hertz. This eight inch woofer by itself can get down to 29 hertz when using Detect Architectural. Six inch can get down to 36 hertz when it's on Detect Architectural. When you're not using Detect Architectural, say you're connecting it to just a third party amplifier, it's not gonna get uh, this level of low because the amp knows that it's connected to these individual speakers. This, uh, this new eight inch model offers a 20% larger 30 millimeter tweeter. So you're gonna get up to 20 kilohertz, but it's gonna have much larger uh, range and able to create a really dynamic sound for those highs and vocals. And the way we engineered the speaker, it's going to have a much larger coverage angle than any other speaker that we've made. This is all optimized through a new motor and waveguide that we created specifically for the speaker and you won't find anywhere else. This high excursion driver allows it to create that really deep bass going down to 29 hertz. And then that waveguide is creating a much larger coverage angle than the six inch speaker. So this way it's gonna spread out the audio further, but also allow it to create better clarity and detail. Now, regardless if you're using the six or eight inch speaker, some uh, placement you know, recommendations here, we're talking six to 10 feet tall ceilings, or six, sorry, six to 10 feet tall um, apart from each other in a home theater scenario, two to six ish feet away from the back of the listener. If you're using these as rear channel speakers, this is kind of the optimum sound, um, spacing for a, something like the audio delay for surrounds and creating the most enveloping environment. If you're connecting up to, uh, your front channels, we have the passive in wall speakers also made to blend into the rest of the home. Really low profile grill here, but thanks to the uh, more rectangular design allows it to sit flush against the wall and you still get all of the details that you would want out of a speaker that's even lower profile. This is built around being a home theater device that blends into that home. You can still, it's still made to be paired up with the amp. You get that true play tuning, custom DSP, and you get a one inch pivoting tweeter and a six and a half inch woofer on board. Just like the in ceiling, these grills are made of the same material. So we recommend painting with that latex uh, water-based paint, touch up tools, strain it down to remove any lumps. When you are installing this one, especially as rears, we recommend having it in the same general vicinity, two to six, two to six feet away from the listener behind them, but five to seven feet off the ground. Um, so this way it's a proper height and that distance has time to reach you as surround sound channel. Lastly are our outdoor speakers. These have become really popular, um, whether being outdoor solution or just dedicated indoor solution with that advanced waterproofing on board. These are a little bit more unique because of this waterproof housing. They still gain custom DSP, but they're not true play tunable due to the frequency of being outdoors uh, and getting a true play signal is much, much more difficult uh, to have a reliable setup. These speakers are completely weatherproof and they cover the military spec of 810 for humidity, salt spray, temperature, and UV. They're IP66 uh, rated, so they're gonna survive all of the elements that you could throw at it and have an operating temperature of uh, negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit, 
to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. So far further than most of us would be listening to music, but creates an awesome opportunity for um, outdoor solutions. So whether you're using it, you know, on the beach, whether you're using it in the great white north or uh, in the most humid south, this is going to survive and handle all those elements perfectly fine. Now, because it is a uh, outdoor speaker, we recommend using outdoor paint and a spray tool to create an even coverage and really blend it in all together. But that concludes the lineup of those architectural speakers. So whether using the in walls, the six or eight inch in ceilings and or our outdoor speakers, you have a lot of different options to really maximize the output of that Sonos amp, but really tying in everything that Sonos can do with those custom solutions. I want to thank you guys all for joining today. We can bring it back to Mark for any uh, outstanding questions and uh, raffle. Yeah, thank you, Brian. That was uh, that was great. I mean, it's it's a good recap uh, for those out there that are very familiar with the line, have been using uh, Sonos, and then you know some some new stuff in there, especially for the new speakers and um, some details on on some, especially the amps and the portions. A lot of the questions come from that and. Some basic networking stuff. We we have a decent amount. Um, I believe you answered this. The the minimum impedance uh, rating for the amp. Uh, what, what what was that? Was it so two? minimum impedance of amp is it can go anywhere from eight ohms down eight to ohms. two ohms dynamically. Two ohms. But you're going to see two ohms used utilized by the um, Sonos Architectural line. Okay. If you want to, basically what's going to happen if you try to use something that's uh, that has a really low or high impedance, depending on how you uh, refer to it. If you use a really low impedance and um, it's not compatible with Sonos, it's just not going to play. Amp's not going to break or explode on you. Oh. So you could try it if you're really gung-ho about trying some set of speakers. Um, this is actually a, a question that I have. Uh, we just uh, recently picked up Integra. Um, and nice. we also, we also do, we also have to do Sony and I believe those are both works with Sony, uh, works with Sonos brands. They are. Um, the, the, the main, the, the big difference between a works with Sonos receiver and one that is not, um, is what it's more of what a control aspect. It's a, it's a control and handshaking aspect. So when you have an Integra or a Sony receiver, uh, connected to something like the port. Um, I've set up uh, many Sony receivers myself. You dive into settings, you hit discover Sonos and it immediately picks it up and you can associate it to different zones and different outputs automatically. Yeah. Without a works with Sonos, uh, you have to use that 12 volt trigger and then it's just whatever you programmed it and you're one and done. Okay, it's um, very helpful. A question from Jeff. Uh, what is the advantage of disabling wireless once a device is wired to the network? The advantage Thanks. of disabling wireless is because it's in a rack system. If you have a lot of Sonos devices, say, you know, I, the metaphor I used or the example I used earlier was 10. When you have 10 devices all broadcasting Wi-Fi, because Sonos will create its own network uh, for larger spaces, when it's broadcasting, 10 devices are broadcasting all within a really short, small amount of area. That's going to naturally just create a ton of interference and uh, create lockups, make it really difficult to add a player outside of that network bubble. And um, most importantly, really, is you're not getting any additional benefit by adding having all these players broadcasting Wi-Fi. It's only going to impede the network. So disabling it is just really for efficiency sake. Gotcha. Okay. Um, is virtual center automatic or only when using uh, speech mode? Uh, it's automatic. So okay. when it detects that 5.1 signal, it's going to automatically take that third channel and mix it in every single time without without asking. Another good one, too. A lot of good questions. Uh, for Atmos in ceiling, would you be able to use the AMP for Atmos or is that something? Um, not something that we uh, we support. Uh, it's something I'm advocating for. It's something I'm really gung ho about. Um, it's just something that Sonos hasn't um, configured for. Okay. Uh, Philip has a good one too. Uh, can you do dual sub minis? Um, I believe you maybe you may have been talking about either the amp or 
on the sound bars, utilizing mm -hmm. two sub minis. So this slide in a system, yeah. Um, so sub mini yeah, was right. engineered to be a singular sub. Um, the idea is two sub minis, even though it, two sub minis cost more than a Sono sub, does not output as much as a Sono sub. So um, it's more economical to just do one Sono sub instead of two sub minis. And if you want more than that, then go dual sub. Good. Okay. Uh, very good. Um, Will the TrueFig Sonads mounting option work with Sonos label speakers? Yeah, um, uh, all of the uh, Sonos architectural line of speakers are around the same footprints as Sonat speakers. So Sonat's accessories are made to work with it. That's a, that's a great question. Uh, good, yeah. Uh, Chad loves how the speaker is uh, set to the bracket. Does that, he loves the cosmetic of the uh, outdoor speakers, apparently. Oh yeah, um, they're super uh, clean. Uh, is the virtual, I think it's the virtual center setting that you turn on. I think you answered that, right? It's automatic, right? Yeah, is so the, the virtual, virtual center okay. will be, it. there's no setting for it. It's just always on if you're playing okay. content. Um, if you're getting a two channel, you're only playing left and right. If you're getting a five channel or a three channel, you're playing that center. Um, all right, a couple more, these are good questions. Um, <clears throat> Have there been any updates to integration platforms along allowing Sonos to play more friendly with Control 4 or TI automation systems? Um, we're always tweaking the API that's available for uh, Works with Sonos partners. So there's always going to be some minor things here and there. Um, I know we have some plans with them, but I don't know uh, specifically, you know, what's uh, what's being added, what's expanding. Um, we have an active conversation with those teams and it's just about working with them to decide, you know, what and when to launch stuff. Um, okay, there's a lot, there's a lot more that we're, I think we're gonna cut it short. I'm just asking about new products that are, are coming out. Um, you never talk about I, new I, products coming I, out. I know you guys are a public trade company. We don't wanna do anything like that. So, um, uh, or, or set you up. <laughs> to answer, yeah. right? so you don't want, you want when you when you can't um but so, also the uh, second we announce new stuff we'll be back here doing another right, presentation there you go there you go so, so it again. you guys do will we have a, first what one more do do we still have a limit on number of devices or is that the same as before that changed same as before 32 room or 32 devices sonos devices in a home so 32 is a pretty high number. If you're going above that, there are uh, different solutions, including like VLANs. But if you're going above 32 systems, that's when you're going to be working on some really advanced networks. Um, thank you so much, Ryan. I really appreciate yeah. it. I sent a private message to the winner. Um, if it, they haven't gotten back to me yet, they don't. I have a, a second choice picked yeah. out. So you'll you'll get that. Uh, you'll get an email from me uh, who the winner is of the new eight inch uh, architectural speakers. Uh, again, Ryan, I really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate your time. Great questions, guys. Um, and we'll, we'll hopefully see you on here. Maybe we'll do it another month when we have a new product or new technology that comes out. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll be looking forward to that. So appreciate everybody's time. Uh, again, we'll have this on our virtual conference center. If you want to, I know there's still some questions. If you have any other questions, reach out to me or one of your sales rep and we'll get an answer for you. But I uh, really appreciate your time today. Yep. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. 21st and we'll see you guys on the next one. All right. Take care.